and I fall asleep and I have a dream that there's a guided missile headed towards my room. And there are all these military personnel in the room with me. And I jump out of bed and I say, what's the plan? <laughs> well, the only difference between this dream and any other is that I literally leapt out of my bed because a few years before that I started walking in my sleep. This wasn't the first time. I remember I was, I was living with my girlfriend at the time and I started having this recurring dream that there was a hovering insect-like jackal in our bedroom, which is the scariest animal one's brain can conjure, in my opinion, is a jackal that defies gravity. You know, it, it looked like kind of a bloated tick uh, with, with fur and, and ferocious teeth and teeny arms, which are the scariest kind because they're unpredictable. And it was, it was such a terrifying image that every night I would jump on our bed and strike a karate pose. I had never taken karate, but I, I had the books from book fair when I was a kid. And I would say, Abby, that was my girlfriend, there's a jackal in the room. And she got so used to this that she could talk me down while remaining asleep. She said, there's no jackal, please go to bed. And I would say, are you sure? <laughs> and she would say, yes, Michael, there's no jackal. Please go to bed. And I would say, okay. <laughs> and I would go to bed knowing there was a jackal. This is the first time I remember sleepwalking. I always had dreams about wild animals when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I had this recurring dream for years that there was a bear walking in the front door of, of my house, literally opening the front door, which is the scariest part when you think about it. A bear with opposable thumbs. Because if a bear can open a door, the sky's the limit. I don't have a plan for that one. My plan was the door. <laughs> in the dream, I would hide in the kitchen cupboard with my sister Patty, and it's pitch black, and I'm scared to death, and I open up the door crack to let in some light. I look next to me, and Patty is gone, and she's been replaced by the bear. <laughs> It doesn't kill me, but it gives me kind of a coy Jack Nicholson-y look. Like, will I kill you? And that's when I wake up. I had that dream for years, and then eventually I attempted to face this lifelong fear. So when I was a kid, it was this bear that would walk in the front door of my house. And as an adult, it was this jackal that would hover above my bed. Well, the sleepwalking got worse. And one night I had a dream that I was in the Olympics for some kind of arbitrary event, like dust bustering. And it told me that I got third place. And I stood up on the third place podium and I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I'm new to the sport, you know. Even in my dreams, I don't win, per se. In my, in my wildest dreams, I place and they say, they say, actually, we reconsidered and we decided that you got second place. And I move over to the second place podium and it starts wobbling. And it's wobbling and wobbling. And I wake up and I'm falling off the top of our five foot bookcase in our living room. And I land on the floor hard on top of our TiVo. I know. <laughs> and it breaks into pieces. And it was like one of these stories you hear where people black out drinking and they wake up in Idaho, they don't know where they are. They're just like, oh no! <laughs> Hardee's, you know, or whatever's there. But it was in my own living room, I was just like, oh no! Devo pieces. And, <laughs> And I get up and I go back to bed and Abby wakes me up in the morning and she says, Michael, 
what happened <laughs> to the teapot? And I say, I got second place. <laughs> and I'm really sorry. This is the first time I remember thinking, well, this seems dangerous. Maybe I should see a doctor. And then I thought, maybe I'll eat dinner. <laughs> and I went with dinner for years. Partly because of my fear of doctors based on the incident I explained earlier. And then partly because sleepwalking is a terrifying phenomenon when you think about it because it's your body making a decision that is different from your conscious mind. Your conscious mind is like, we're going to rest for a few hours. Your body's like, we're going skiing, you know. <laughs> and it also involves your brain. And your brain is, is, is a terrifying area. You know, the, 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 the list of fun brain diseases is very short uh, if you're ever surfing WebMD late into the evening. So I didn't want to deal with it, so I didn't see a doctor, but I, I did buy a book. It was called The Promise of Sleep, and I'll show you this, because <laughs> it was written by a guy named Dr. Dement, uh, which, which is a very unfortunate name for a man trying to instill calm. I feel like he might have opted for a pseudonym like Dr. Happy Sleep or Dr. Chamomile Tea. Good to meet you. And uh, I'm reading the first few chapters about, uh, about healthy sleep habits. And it, he recommends uh, four basic tips for healthier sleep. And they all have to do with powering down a few hours before bed, turning off the, the news and your phone and, and, uh, and the internet and don't eat big meals, which just so happen to be my four favorite activities before I go to bed. I have an addiction to pizza, or as Dr. Dement would call it, big meals. Uh, my favorite time to eat pizza is actually the moment before I fall asleep. Well, I'm also reading in the, in the Promise of Sleep about anxiety and about how anxiety heightens all of our sleep issues. And at this point in my life, I, I was experiencing the height of my anxiety because this goes on for months and months of very specific things, locations and dresses and flowers. And I know this isn't going to happen and my breathing gets worse and my sleepwalking gets worse and Abby can sense it. But the biggest difference was that my new girlfriend was not okay with the jackal. <laughs> I was like, there's a jackal in the room! She said, there's no jackal, and you have to see a doctor! <laughs> and I said, I will! But right now, I'm really busy. <laughs> One night we fall asleep watching the movie Fight Club. You can see where this is going. <laughs> If you haven't seen the film, there's a scene where Edward Norton's hand is held down by Brad Pitt, and Brad Pitt is gonna pour acid on his hand, and I had a dream that that was my hand. And I pulled it out of the way, and I sprinted out of our bedroom, and I sprinted out of our apartment, I even threw a chest of drawers in my wake, like in an action film, because I knew Brad Pitt is very cunning. And I sprinted down the hall, and I hit the elevator button, my girlfriend runs out and she goes, Michael, you're dreaming! And I was like, Brad Pitt! <laughs> I am so sorry. And she said, you have to see a doctor. And I said, I will. And I didn't. <laughs> but I continued to read The Promise of Sleep. I skipped ahead to a chapter on sleep disorders. There are 78 known sleep disorders, things that range from sleep apnea to night terrors to narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is terrifying because there are people who fall asleep at any time for any reason. There are female narcoleptics who fall asleep the moment they reach orgasm. I was thinking you could call these women men. <laughs> And 
I find a disorder called REM behavior disorder, where people have a dopamine deficiency. That's the chemical that's released from your brain into your body when you fall asleep that paralyzes your body so that you don't do what's in your brain. People who have this are commonly running away from some kind of demon or wild animal or jackal and people who have this in rare instances have been known to kill the person they're in bed with while remaining asleep. I know, so in other words, a guy would have a dream that there's a burglar at the door and he would take a bat and he would beat the burglar to death and he would wake up and it's not a burglar, it's his wife and she's dead. And I read this and I thought, maybe this is what I have. And I still didn't see a doctor. It's five years ago, and I'm in Walla Walla, Washington. I'm lying in bed at La Quinta Inn. I'm watching the news, I'm Googling myself, and I'm eating a pizza all at the same time. And I fall asleep and have a dream that there's a guided missile headed towards my room, and I jump out of bed, and I say, what's the plan? And they say, the missile coordinates are set specifically on you. So I decide in my dream, and as it turns out, in my life, to jump out my window so as to detonate outside the window for the sake of the platoon. In my dreams, I'm a hero. And there are two important details. One, I was on the second floor. Two, the window was closed. It was January, so I jumped through a window like the Hulk. And I say that because that's how I described it at the emergency room. It's a very difficult thing to explain when one has jumped through a window. I was like, you know the Hulk? You know how he kind of just, just kind of jumps through stuff? Yeah, that's like me. And what was remarkable was that I landed on the front lawn, and I took a fall, and I got up, and I kept running. And I'm running, and I'm slowly realizing I'm on the front lawn of La Quinta Inn in Wyo Wyo Washington in my underwear bleeding and I'm like oh no but in that moment I was relieved that I hadn't been hit by the missile I'm lying in the hospital bed and they've cut open my clothes and I can see that there's glass coming out of my legs and it was the most pain I had ever felt because it was the physical pain of glass coming out of my legs and the emotional pain of there's glass coming out of my legs. How did I get to a point where there's glass coming out of my legs? I'm shivering, it's January, and I kept asking for these warm blankets because I feared if I moved too much, the glass could go deeper into my legs. I remember to say to the nurse, I, I feel rude asking, but if the doctor could come by, that would be amazing. I don't. I don't know what else you guys got going on, but I'm willing to put this head to head with whatever you got. And eventually, eventually the doctor came and he starts taking these pieces of glass out of my legs. And he points out that he's right near my femoral artery. And if I had hit that, I could have bled to death. He said, you know, you should be dead. And I said, no, you should. I zinged him because I'm a comedian. Two hours later, he finishes putting 33 stitches in my legs. And I flew back to New York, and I did what I should have done in the first place when I saw the jackal when I was in the Dustbuster Olympics. And when I threw a chest of drawers in front of Brad Pitt. And I, I went to a doctor who specializes in sleep disorders, and I was diagnosed with REM behavior disorder. And so now, when I go to bed at night, I take medication, and I, I'm not making this up, I, I sleep in a sleeping bag up to my neck, and I wear mittens. So I can't open the sleeping bag.
So literally, if I had the same dream again, it would just be like, 